All right, guys, welcome back. Let's start hooking up those vertex colors into our uh, Unreal project. As you can see, our digital asset now is bringing in those funky um, vertex colors that we've got on our digital asset. And you can see that the ramps have pulled through as well, so we can really tweak the position in, in the editor and have Houdini compile it for us. So what we want to do is, I'm just gonna keep it dead simple. I'm just gonna create a new material and call it master material underscore um, IV stem. And we're gonna keep this really, really simple. Um, we're going to use that vertex color to drive some parameters in this shader. So it's all going to be coming from the vertex color. So if we right click and put down a vertex color, we've now got access to those, uh, that information that we added onto our geometry. And if you remember, the red channel was for the wind and the green channel was for the color blend. So let's keep it simple. First of all, let's just fix this uh, color blend value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down two vector threes by just holding down three on my keyboard and left clicking on the canvas. And these are going to be the two colors that we're going to blend between. So I'm going to do like a deep dark brown color. And then for this, we'll maybe go for like a lightish green. And we can turn these into parameters so we can tweak them in, in the engine depending on what we need. So we want to drive a blend between these two colors based on our green vertex color channel. So we can do that with a linear interpolate node. A linear interpolate is just going to blend between two values based on an incoming index. And the index we're gonna use is our green vertex color information. Okay, and we'll plug that into base color and then just apply that. I'm gonna move this off to the side now at the moment nothing's happened because we, we've not assigned this material to our digital asset yet and we can do that within Houdini so I'm going to jump back to Houdini um, and what we need to do is make use of this unreal material attribute again so I'm going to put down another unreal attribute unreal material attribute should I say and I'm going to jump back to unreal and grab a, a reference to this new shader that we've created um, and if you find in the references tab there, we can copy that reference, jump back to Houdini, and in the string value for this Unreal Material node, we can paste that in. So now it's got that connection. One more step that we need to do is we need to put our stems into a group so we can focus that material just on the stems. So I'm gonna come back up into my network where I sort of finish working on my stem and just put down a group node and call it stem. All right, so now we can see that all those primitives have gone into that group. So for the Unreal Material node that we've just created, we want this just to focus on that stem group. So we'll put stem there. And we will save our asset. Jump back over to Unreal and then find our digital asset and just do a quick rebuild of all instances there. And you can see it's picked up that new, that new shader with the, with the color blend on it. So let's go back to our material. A couple more things we want to do on the actual shader node itself. We need to make a few changes here. Um, so we want it to be two sided and the shading model we can set to um, two sided foliage. Okay and then just hit apply. So now you can see we're getting that two-sided effect which is gonna work better for us. And also the way we've built this digital asset, we can tweak the color blend using this ramp here. So if we want to sort of map just the very, very tips of those uh, to be green, you can see we've got that level of control as well. So we can really get in there and sort of tweak these values as, as we see fit. All right, awesome. So the next thing we want to fix is the red channel, which was our wind operator. Okay, and we can do that with um, using a simple wind. Okay. Now, this takes a bunch of parameters. Okay, so the intensity, the wind, and a, an additional world position. Okay, so we're driving it using the red channel. So we want to multiply all these values by the value coming from our 
red vertex color, okay? So I'm gonna put down a couple of multiply nodes. And just wire them up. Make those connections. And we'll just use the red channel for that final world position. And then that can go into the world position offset. Okay, and as you can see, we've got a nicely distorted <laughs> shade of preview there. Um, now, what we want to do, we want to be a little bit clever for, for the, the values that we want to come in. We want to be able to reuse these across all of our foliage assets. So no matter how many instances we've got, they're all going to have the same wind values across them. Kind of makes sense. Um, so we're going to create a material function just to take care of that wind. So I'm going to slide this out of the way. I'm going to go back to my materials folder and I'm going to create a new material function. Okay. And I'll call this MF wind values. Okay. And then jump inside that. So we can use this as a just as a data container, really, that we can reference in other in other material networks, so that we're we're, we're sure that the the wind values are, are going to be uniform across the um, across all the assets that are using it. So I'm going to hold down one and left click on the canvas to just put down a, a simple uh, float parameter there. I'm going to set it to 0.25, say. And I'm going to make that connection to the output. Okay, and on the output, I want this to be the wind intensity. Okay, and then we can copy and paste that for another output. This one is going to be the weight. And one final time for the speed. So wind speed. All right, and 0.25 value is kind of okay but what we can do is select all these nodes right click convert them to parameters and just rename them again intensity intensity weight and speed cool and obviously you can spend a bit more time putting in some logical values into uh, into these sliders here for this uh, this almost like a utility node here that we've built so i'm going to apply and save that i'm going to jump back across to my stem and i'm going to drag in an instance of that wind values material function and these are going to provide the multiplier values for our intensity weight and speed so as you can see, I've got the ordering wrong, so I'm going to rely that I got it right, and I'm going to make those connections. Okay, and then hit apply. And then let's take a look at our stem. And there you can see we've got like a, a nice gentle sort of waving motion on, on, the, uh, on the stem itself. Um, but at the bottom here, you can see we're getting next to no movement at all because of the way that we've built our ramp parameter. Uh, and as we progress up, we're starting to get ever so slightly more. Um, and the way we've designed the system is obviously if you've got a short sort of stem, it's going to, you know, still receive its fair share of wind. So it's quite a robust system. OK, obviously, the glaring problem at the moment is the wind is the leaves aren't moving alongside the stem so we need to fix that we need to add that uh, vertex color attribute onto our leaves so they can pick up the um, the wind values as well and we'll do that in the next video so thanks